Hi, this is Kate with Above and Beyond Sewing in Denver, and today we are bringing you our Baby Lock Club for February of 2019, and it is everything to do with twin and triple needles, how we can use them for embroidery and how we can use them for sewing and techniques. So let's go ahead and get started this morning. First of all, a twin needle is sized in two different sizes. So we actually have the size of the needle. In this case, it's size 100. And then the 6.0 millimeters is actually determining the distance between the needles. So on this one, it is six millimeters between the left needle and the right needle. The needle is inserted just the same way that a traditional needle would be inserted with the flat side to the back, and it has just one shank. Twin needles range from a 1.6 to a 6.0 spacing. So depending on your machine and the technique that you're using will depend on the size of needle that you would choose to use. So again, this one is one of the wider ones that we're going to be using. And then this one here is a two millimeter twin needle. And as you can see, the needles are seated much closer together. So these are available to use in embroidery and in sewing. On a triple needle, it comes the same way that we have one shank with a flat side that goes to the back, but now we actually have three needles seated very, very close together. This one is actually a 2.5 triple needle, which means the distance from the left needle to the right needle is a total of 2.5. So let's go ahead and insert the needle into the machine. You're going to release your needle and then you're going to put your flat side of your needle into the machine and tighten down on the screw. When we're threading, we have three different colors that we're going to use today. Um, I like to use vibrant colors, especially when I'm embroidering onto some black fabric here. So what we're going to do is we're going to position these on the machine. I'm going to take advantage of the two spool thread stand that comes on the Baby Lock Solaris or on the Baby Lock Destiny. And I'm going to go ahead and slip one thread up and over and my other thread up and over. My third spool is going to sit down into the top of the machine where you would put a one spool thread. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of my threads and I'm going to act like it is one spool of thread and I'm going to take it through the machine together. So these will actually feed through the machine as if it was one thread of um, one strand of thread. When we are doing triple needle, we want to keep all of those threads together. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take all three threads through this one bar. And that's the number six thread guide. And then because we do have triple needle in there, this is going to be the same whether you're working on triple needle or a double needle, you cannot use your needle threader. So at this point, I'm going to put my presser foot down and I'm going to manually thread my needles. It really does not matter where the positioning is of the threads on the machine and which needle you thread. This is probably the hardest thing when you're working with the triple or the specialty needles is the manual threading that you have to do. Okay, so now we are all ready to go. One of the issues that you have when you're working with the specialty needles is making sure that you select an appropriate design. 
And the baby lock machines have the wonderful IQ um, program built into the machine that actually has the ideal program. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to IQ at this point. So we're gonna go into the IQ designer. I have selected um, just the little five by seven hoop, but basically what we're doing is we're creating a piece of fabric that we will be able to use and you, um, put into a project. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose one of my shapes. I'm gonna choose my square and I'm going to go into my sizing option and I'm gonna size this so that it will fit within my five by seven hoop. And then we have our fill options right here. So we're gonna go into the fill options and in the fill, you have a built-in stipple or you have some built-in programmable fills. Just about all of these programmable fill stitches in here are an outline type stitch that works very beautifully with a double or a triple needle. Um, the crosshair one, the circle one, all of these will work very well. For today's demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my stipple. I'm gonna choose a color and I'm gonna to go to my fill option and just fill inside. I do not want an outline, so I'm gonna to go to my outline preferences. I'm gonna tell the machine no sew, and then I'm going to select my outline so it doesn't fill on an outline. So here is my stipple. Now one of the things that we need to remember, we are not sewing this with a single needle. So when we have a double or a triple needle in there, the distance here is not compensated in this stippling. So the stippling will quite likely overlap each other if we don't re-space this out. The default spacing for the stippling is 0.20. I have found that increasing this to about 0.40 is probably about your best option, depending on the size of the stitch that we're doing. The other thing that you absolutely have to do when you're working with any of these specialty needles is to slow your machine down. So to slow the machine down in embroidery, we are gonna to go to our settings page up across the top. And I currently have the machine set at 1,050. I'm going to take this all the way down to 350 and say okay. Whenever we are doing this, we are going to want to make sure that we have clearance within the foot to make sure that we don't break a needle. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and go back over to where the needles are. And this is one of those times that I would recommend that you hold onto your tails to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hand crank my machine one complete cycle to make sure that I have clearance in my foot and down in my bobbin area. And now we can go ahead and tell the machine that we are ready to embroider this. So at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and press our start button. This is one of those times that you want to let it start to sew just a few stitches to lock that in. And then we're gonna go ahead and trim away our excess threads here. When you're sewing with just one thread, the machine buries that thread down into the hoop and on the underneath side of your fabric. But when you're working with three different um, needles and three different threads, you want to take care of those tails yourself. And you will notice that this kind of looks like a braided effect. I'm hoping that we can get this zoomed in enough that you can actually see how that sews out. It almost creates like a rope type effect. And as it changes direction on the sewing, you will see that the threads are crisscrossing themselves. So we're gonna go ahead and let this sew out for a couple of moments here. Okay, so the machine has just finished the embroidery and here is our finished piece that we have. And as you can see, it has stitched beautifully. Um, the vibrant colors on the black fabric really make it pop. This would be a great thing for you to do to maybe fill your largest hoop 
and then have pre-made fabric that you can cut up and use for bags or totes or pockets or whatever you would like to use them for. So here are some of the different um, fill patterns that I have used in the IQ designer. So first of all, here is another triple needle done on a lighter fabric with similar colors. So you can just see a different color wave right there. This one right here is actually using the outline alphabet with the frame shapes. And the frame shape, I just chose the basic run stitch. So you can even do lettering or your shapes with this. This one is probably one of my favorite ones. This is actually a triple stitch. So when the machine does the stippling, it just does a single run stitch. This one is actually a triple straight stitch. So it goes forwards, backwards, and forwards over each one. So it's actually laying the thread down in a triple motion and it gives a much heavier finish to the um, sample. And this one is just using the default sizes in the diamond shape IQ fill design program. This one is pretty cool also. This one almost gives like a shadow effect. And this one is the circle fill. Again, this was left at default. Um, so you can definitely change the sizing and the shaping on all of these. And then we're going to move on to a twin needle. So the twin needle with the embroidery is going to work identical to the triple needle with the exception of one threading path. So this time there is a thread guide right above the eye of the needle, that little thread guide six. When you have two threads, you will want to put one thread in that guide and one thread out of that guide. So you do want to keep the two threads separated in that last thread guide right above the eye of the needle, right where it says number six. But other than that, there's really nothing new to remember. So we're just going to go ahead and remember to space out our stippling. But this is going to be what a twin needle. This was sewn with a twin needle 2.0. That would be a pretty narrow twin needle. So it's such as this one right here. So we've got the twin needle stippling. This one's a little bit more complex. This one definitely has some movement to it. It almost gives a shadow effect. And again, this is one of your fill stitches in the IQ Designer. And you will notice that there are places that it does overlap. So that's kind of what's given it that shadow, shadow effect is from the overlapping of the stitches. If you don't like the overlap, you probably do want to do some test sews to make sure that you're going to be happy with the final stitch out. And here's that same diamond cross one with a double needle instead of the triple needle. So just go ahead and get creative with all of the different stitches that you can do in your machine. Be careful that you're choosing an outline design. Um, quilting stitches work great for this. Um, and again, just remember to slow your machine down and remember to hand crank to make sure you've got clearance in the foot so that you don't break one of the needles. And have fun doing embroidery with your twin and triple needles. Hi, this is Kate again from Above and Beyond Sewing in Denver. And this is part two of our Baby Lock Club for February 2019, everything to do with twin needle and triple needle. In part one, we covered the embroidery aspect of working with a twin and triple needle. And now we're gonna go ahead and cover the sewing portion, not only the decorative aspect, but also all of the techniques that you can do with your twin and triple needles. So when you're working with a triple needle in sewing, here is some really pretty samples here of the types of stitches that you can use with your triple needle. The triple needle obviously has three different needles that are set really close together. You have to be extremely careful on the width of the stitch that you choose. So there is a formula for this. What we do is we take the needle width, so if it's a 2.5 or a 3.0, and our baby lock machines have a 7.0 clearance. 
So if we have a 3.0 um, triple needle or a twin needle, that means that our stitch width for our decorative stitch cannot be any greater than a 4.0. So the addition of the stitch width and the needle width needs to make sure that you do not total any more than a seven millimeter um, creation. So let's go ahead and move on to the machine at this point. So when we go into the machine, um, we do have an option on our baby lock machines that we can actually go in and use our, um, our decorative stitches for twin needle. So the first thing we're actually going to do is pin tucks with the twin needle. So our pin tucks are created by using a narrow needle. So for the pin tucks, you want to use a 2.0 or a 2.5. And the pin tucks are actually created by the use of a pin tuck foot. So our pin tuck foot is a foot that has grooves on the underneath side. This foot is available in two sizes. It's available as a three groove or a five groove pin tuck foot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the pin tuck foot onto the machine. And I have set up the machine with a um, two colors of um, cotton thread to do our pin tucks on. Pin tucks is one of the techniques that you would want to make sure that your fabric doesn't have any type of starch on. So that it has to be a really lightweight fabric such as a batiste um, or a lightweight cotton, no sizing in it and no starch. You also want to make sure that you're not using any stabilizer because we're manipulating the fabric to create a pin tuck. So we're going to go ahead and lay the fabric underneath the foot and at this point I'm just going to lower my presser foot down and I'm going to just stitch a straight stitch. So all I have selected on my machine is my regular straight stitch. I'm using a 2.0 twin needle and a five groove pin tuck foot. And we're gonna sew the length of this piece of fabric. We're gonna use the built-in cutting mechanism. And you will see that it has created a beautiful pin tuck. I'm not sure how well that will show up on the camera. On the underneath side of the foot, there are five little grooves. Hence why this is called a five groove pin tuck foot. What we're going to do is we're going to channel the pin tuck into one of the grooves of the foot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the groove into the far right side of the foot. We're going to lower the presser foot down and that groove is going to, that pin tuck is going to stay in that groove for us so that we can get a parallel row of stitching right next to the first pin tuck. The machine is going to do all the work for you. All you need to do is to sew slow. You absolutely do not want to slow a, sew at a fast pace when you're doing this technique. And here is our second row and it is stitched perfectly parallel to the first row of stitching. Again, we're going to move on and we're going to put the second pin tuck into that last groove, lower the presser foot down, and sew another set. And now you can see that I have a set of three pin tucks sewn here. The general rule on sewing pin tucks is that you always create an uneven number of pin tuck rows. So here are some pin tucks that I did earlier and you can see that we've got a nice set of pin tucks running along here. You also have an option to do corded pin tucks. The difference with a corded pin tuck is that you will actually put some type of a gimp cord up into the pin tuck. It makes the pin tucks a little bit more pronounced and they will keep their shape for a lot longer years after years if it's going to be an heirloom treasure that you are creating. So I'm going to show you the general method of how we do that. 
With your machines, you have a bobbin cover that looks something like this that has a hole in it. I'm going to try and show you where that hole is. Hopefully you can see that. And what we're going to do is we are going to feed the, um, the gimp cord through the hole and then we're going to feed it up into the little U-shape opening. This will then go directly onto your machine and this cord will feed directly between the two needles up into one of the grooves, the center groove on the um, pin tuck foot. And the machine itself will just keep that cording completely in place. There's really not a whole lot that you have to do to change that. Um, it just guides it directly where it needs to go. Okay, another technique that you can do with a twin needle is for sewing down braid and ribbon. So what you can do for something like that, if you've ever done stained glass um, applique, you can actually choose a wider twin needle and you would want to choose a twin needle that will match the width of your either the clover bias tape or the ribbon or the braid that you're stitching down and it will actually stitch down on either edge of that braid and trim for you automatically. This one here is a 6.0, so this would be for a wider trim. Most of your quarter inch trims are gonna be stitched down with a 4.0 double needle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my pin tuck foot at this time, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my standard foot back on. One of the other techniques that you can do with your twin needle is your hemming. Now, hemming on a knit fabric can sometimes be a little bit challenging, but this is um, the equivalent of a cover stitch on a serger. So what this has is your two rows of stitching on the top side, and then it has a locking stitch on the underneath side. Remember, your bobbin has to connect between the two needles on the underneath side. So you will always get like a zigzag effect. So to do this type of technique, you're going to take your knit fabric. Again, you're going to select your straight stitch. And I have just pressed up about a one inch hem. And I'm going to leave the purple color thread on so that you can see this stitching. But basically, we're just going to sew a straight stitch. Again, you're going to notice that my speed is sewing at about half the speed that it would normally be sewing at. So here is the equivalent of a narrow cover stitch, and this will stretch with the fabric. So it makes it very nice, desirable edge on your knit fabrics if you don't have the luxury of having a serger that has the cover stitch option. Your twin needle is also a time for you to play with your decorative stitches. So here's a sampling of some of the decorative stitches that you can do with your twin needle. So you'll notice this time that we've got a really pretty scallop, a feather stitch. You can do your straight stitches. Um, a lot of this is going to depend whether you're using a 6.0 or a 2.0. The difference is going to be the distance between the needles. So this is going to be a wider twin needle. So if this is a 6.0 twin needle, then we really cannot create any stitch width in that because we're already using six millimeters of the opening and we only have seven available. This is the serpentine stitch. That's a very popular one. So the serpentine stitch here was set at about a 4.0 and I'm using about a 2.5. So I'm using about 6.5 of my total stitch width available. Um, straight stitch, the triple straight stitch, zigzag, and the triple zigzag. So play with a lot of those decorative stitches. This is actually an heirloom quilt that was created primarily using the triple needle. And you will see a lot of beautiful techniques on here whereby we're using triple needle and we're stitching down on the edges of ribbon. We are also using a technique in this sample that's actually called a wing needle. 
And a wing needle is a needle that says just that. A wing needle has wings on either side. So you'll see here that it is a very wide needle. The idea of this is that it penetrates the fabric and puts a hole into the fabric. So you will see here some of these um, holes where the needle has gone down into the fabric in and out several times. You absolutely do want to make sure that you are using a 100% natural fiber fabric. And also for this technique, you would need to use some type of spray stabilizer to make sure that your fabric is nice and starched prior to um, proceeding to work with the twin or the triple needles. Um, one of the other features on the Destiny and the Solaris is the capability that these machines will actually help us when we're working with a twin needle in that we have a twin needle option on the machines. The twin needle function on our machines will actually automatically decrease the stitch width by two millimeters. Now there is definitely pros and cons for this. So if you're using a twin needle and you select the twin needle function on your machine, the machine will automatically gray out a lot of the stitches. So unfortunately, we're now going to be limited on the number of stitches that we can select when we have our twin needle inserted. The pro would be that the machine will automatically decrease the stitch width to calculate the distance for a 2.0 twin needle. So if you're using a 2.0 twin needle, the twin needle function on your machine is definitely beneficial. But the machine does believe it knows best and then it will deselect a lot of the stitches, only giving you a few stitches to choose from. So I personally prefer not to use my twin needle function on my machine and just do the math personally. So I always am adding the distance of my, my needle width and the stitch width together to make sure that I am not exceeding a 7.0 millimeter total distance. Okay, so these videos can be found in three locations. They can be found on our website at aboveandbeyondsewing.com under tips and tricks. It can also be found on the YouTube channel or it can be found on our Facebook page. Hope you enjoy working with your triple and twin needles and have fun.